A transfer switch allows you to use the grid or an alternative source to power up your critical loads panel. Welcome to Do-It-Yourself Volts, I'm Seth. Today we're going to be installing this 10 slot transfer switch to either use grid power or a power station to power up my critical loads panel. Let's take a look at the package contents of this transfer switch. If I open this up here, there is a packet of information for installation. It has a cable here that does have the three prong 30 amp plug and that will be used to plug from a generator or power station into this transfer switch. We've got the plug itself, which will go in this space right here. There are a few metal fittings, which will allow us to take the wire harness from the transfer switch through this conduit into our main panel. An assortment of wire nuts that can be used to connect the wiring. And then we have the transfer switch itself, which I will pull out so you can see in closer detail. Let's take a close up look at this transfer switch and I will discuss how it works. This is the Goal Zero Haven 10 10 slot transfer switch, which means it has 10 slots. As you can see here, there are 10 different switches and those have three positions, grid, off, or external input. Those coincide with these 10 breakers. Four of them are 20 amp and six of them are 15 amp. This space down here is where I'm going to be installing a plug, which will allow me to basically uh, install an outside source other than the grid. So generator, power station, or an inverter combination. There's also some meters up here, so you can read out the watt value as the power is being used here by this transfer switch. So how does this work? You've got a wire harness down here on this side that has a green, a white, 10 blacks, and 10 reds. Essentially, you're going to take the black wire and feed that into the critical load of your panel, and the red wire is gonna be coming in from the breaker of the previous circuit. So essentially, you're making a loop. You can either feed through here, go back out to power through the grid, or you can feed through here switch this over and feed out through the uh, secondary input. So it'll make more sense whenever we get this wired up over here on the wall. Step number one is to remove both the cover for where the outlet plug is going to be, but also remove the case over here so we can access the inside of this to allow us to install this plug. So I'm gonna get these two screws undone on the side Now we can lift up this panel, move that over to the side. This is the plug that's gonna take the incoming secondary power, and it has four different holes for wires on it. One is a green screw, which will be the ground, and this kit did include a pigtail to be used for that. Across from that is a silver screw, and that's gonna be for the neutral, which is this white wire down here. And then lastly, there are two other wires, a red and a black. Those are gonna go into the golden colored screws that are over here and we'll bring in the hot power. Now, before I get any of these wires installed, I have to remember to take the front plate and get this connected in here. And so I'm just going to use the included screws to get that mounted into the front plate. If you forget to do this step first, then you'll have wires in a way that you can't really uh, get through the front cover, so don't forget the cover first. All right, let's begin wiring this up. So on the back here, I'm going to find my ground screw, which is this one over here, and I'm going to place my ground green wire in that hole, and then just use a Phillips head to tighten that down. And now across from that is the neutral wire, which is the white one. You need to plug that up in here. Might get a little cramped for you to see, but just take my word that I'm getting that installed there. Lastly, we have the red and black wires. Now it doesn't matter which hole these go into, but the black wire is a little shorter in this model, so I'm gonna put that 
closer to the switch here. Okay, and lastly, the red one is gonna go up under here on the bottom. Now the last thing before I can close this cover up is to get these two grounds linked into this grounding screw over here on the case. So let me get that done and then we will close this up and be ready to move on to the next step. I now have that plug finished. Let's go ahead and click this back in place. I believe the reason they don't pre-install this plug is because you may need to use other style plugs and you can swap them out as needed. But for me, this one right here should work just fine. All right, and that completes the installation of the plug. Let's move on to the next step. I'm gonna be using this knockout here for installing my wiring. So I need to get that one punched real quick. Now I can take this adapter and place it into this hole. Now it's time to get the transfer switch mounted where I want it. So down here you see the wire harness. I have cut down the metal pipe to uh, fit in this space. So let me go ahead and get that where I want it here. Right there. All right, and so this is gonna go into this unit like this. And I want it to go straight across, something like that. And so I've got a pencil. I can mark the mounting hole up here. All right, there we go. And now I can just put a screw in up top here to hold this in place. I'll lock this in a little better here in a few minutes, but for now, this will just hold it up. Now that I have the transfer switch up here on the wall, it's time to feed all of these wires into the conduit that was just plugged up here as well. So we'll go ahead and get these straightened out and then they obviously give an excessive amount of wire, which is fine, but we will go ahead and trim this down as needed whenever we get into the main panel. All right, so this may be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to try my best to get all of these snuck into this conduit. It's got to make a pretty sharp turn to get in there. Definitely pushes the limits of how many wires can fit through a single conduit. All right, I'll be back in a minute whenever I have all of these through here. I now have all of the wires turned into this conduit. I'm going to put the cap on here and get this tightened down and that will complete the outside of this unit and then we get the fun task of moving on to the wiring. I'll finish getting those tightened but there's also a screw over here that needs to be tightened down and that will keep the conduit into our main panel. I have all the wires here in my main panel ready to be connected. Very important, the power is turned off to this panel so no matter what I touch in here I won't be getting electrocuted. So keep that in mind whenever you're working on a panel like this shut off the power because you're going to be dealing with the hot wires directly. So first step is to isolate the green wire, which is the ground. And this is going to skirt around and connect over to my ground bus bar on the side over here. So let's do that first. It's not easy filming in such a cramped space, but I've got my green wire. I'm going to give myself plenty of extra and I'm going to cut this about right here. Okay. And now I can strip that down to expose the wire. I've got an available spot down here on my grounding bus bar. I'm going to take this wire and kind of sneak it up under the others. Likewise to the green wire, I'm going to take the white wire, give myself a little extra room here, and I'm going to be connecting it over here to my neutral bus bar. So about right here should give me sufficient wire. Cut that out. Once again, strip down a spot on the end. Now that I have the neutral and the ground connected through the transfer switch, it's time to start working with the breakers. 
Now, I've separated the two A's in this kit. So if you look at this wire, the black wire has AAA, and if you look at the red, it has AAA. So those two are now matching. It's important to keep those together. That will go with breaker number A over here. So this one right here, this switch, this breaker. So what we want to do first is pick a breaker. I'm gonna pick this one right here and I'm going to remove the wire out of that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up here, take my screwdriver and just pull that wire out. Okay, this wire right here is going to be connected to a Wago connector, which is this little spring-loaded connector that just joins wires together. So clip, clip that in there, makes a nice solid connection. And I need to take this wire from the transfer switch and I can cut this down because it is much too long here. Now I can strip that so I can have access to it. The other end of that is gonna go into the Wago connector. There we go, a nice solid connection. Now I can just tuck that over to the side because it is done. Now that same corresponding red wire that came with the transfer switch, this one right here, needs to now go up and reconnect to that breaker. So I'm gonna cut once again, giving myself a little bit of extra room, just like this. Strip that down. Okay, and now that is gonna go into this breaker. Use my screwdriver to get that reconnected. That circuit is now done. So as you can see, it's gonna be very repetitive doing all of these the same way. I'm gonna find B here on these wires. We'll do one more together and then I'll uh, uh, do the rest of them without you. All right, here is wire B for the black. There we go, that's wire B. So those two go together. Go up here to the second breaker. Disconnect that wire. I'll put these Wago connectors in the description so you can find them. I believe I bought a box of these on Amazon. Right, link that one together. Get an appropriate amount of wire for the black one. Link these two together. Oop. Don't think I have quite enough of that sheathing removed. There we go, much better. Now the red wire needs to once again go up here to reconnect to that breaker. Cut enough of this out of here. All right, there's the second one done. Now, as you can see, it's quite repetitive, so let me get the rest of these finished and I'll show you what it looks like here at the end. I just finished getting all of the circuits transferred over. As you can see, the black wires have been removed from the breakers in the sub panel and they have been moved over to go to the loads into the transfer switch and the red wires have now been replaced in those breakers. Let's go ahead and test out to see if the grid is functioning again. Let me flip my grid back on there. All right, I have all of the switches on the transfer switch turned to the off position. So let me go ahead and plug up a light and we will see if these are gonna turn on for us. Get a light switch flipped on here. As you can see, there is no power currently. All right, it's one of these last four here. So let me go ahead and flip it to grid. That was it, okay. Check this out, the light has now come on in here. So grid power is working just fine. In order to test out the secondary input, I've got the included cable that came with the transfer switch, and I've got a large power station down here. So I'm going to plug up this 30 amp cable to the power station, and then take this up here. 
The cord is not very long, so I had to put my power station up here on this. But if I go ahead and plug up here, looks like this way. Whenever I shut this off, the light in there will turn off. It did, and then now it comes back on. Let me show you here. So there's the light on, and it is running from the power station up here on this switch right here going through this breaker. Looks like it's pulling about 150 watts. And there we go. That is the basics of installing a transfer switch into a main panel. So the plug that you see here can be used with either a power station like I've got right here. It could be used with an off-grid inverter like this one over here. You could put a generator up to that or any other kind of input power source that you have. And in order to uh, swap back over to the grid, you just flip this switch down to the grid setting and it will start using the other breaker instead of this one. All right, so as far as power consumption up here, I don't really see anything changing on this meter. Uh, maybe I have to have more uh, watts than I currently have because that right there says 3,750. I'd have to turn a lot of stuff on in order to see that thing move. Don't really have anything here in my studio space just yet. But anyway, uh, very cool. I hope you found this video on installing a transfer switch to be helpful. It's not that bad of a task once you get into it, but if this seems daunting, definitely contact a professional and have them do it for you. The main things to consider here is that you keep your red wires going to the breaker in your panel and the black wires are going to be connected to the loads going into your building. If you swap those up, you're gonna have some problems. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. If you've got some questions or comments, write those down below, I'd like to hear those. I'm Seth with the Do-It-Yourself Volts channel, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.